Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich from CapturingTheCharmLife.com. If you are a homeschool mama challenged by doubt, not sure you can do this homeschool thing. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by overwhelm, there are just too many things to do. Or if you are a homeschool mama unsure that the way you're showing up in your homeschool isn't the way you want to be showing up in your homeschool, then this is the podcast for you. I'm here to encourage you in your homeschool journey to help you strategize ways to turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. So welcome, homeschool mama. Hey you, let's chat about living our homeschool lives on purpose. It's too easy to do homeschool the way we think other people have said would be a really great way to do it or we buy into a certain homeschool philosophy and get excited that we're joining a community that's like-minded and that is totally cool, except that everything doesn't totally work for your kids. Yeah. Are we choosing to live our lives, our homeschool lives, on purpose? It's really easy to get lost in all the homeschool details and plan out our days or pursue all the learning opportunities and get excited about meeting new people, allowing our kids to do more extracurriculars, finding things in the community, mentors, activities, interesting things to learn, and do so much of that that we forget that um, we are also in our homeschools and we have needs. And we're living a homeschool life that is anything but on purpose and anything but simple. Hey, grab yourself a hot drink. Can I suggest a pumpkin spice latte? I'm going to Starbucks today to have my annual pumpkin spice latte. Half shot of syrup, though, please. Not so much sugar. I am buying a pumpkin spiced candle to light while I wrap myself in a cozy burnt orange blanket and find a quiet place to chat with you. Okay, so... I have a quiet place this year. I don't know about you. It's 9.30 and my son, my almost 13-year-old son in grade 8 this year, is still not awake. I expect that when I see him next, he'll probably be a solid foot taller. And um, in the meantime, I have gone for a run. I've done all my morning routine stuff, opened up the goat barn, fed the goats, opened up the chicken coop, fed the chickens... I gave my great Pyrenees dog, Violet, a walk. I've had breakfast, I've had coffee, and saw that my daughter has already gone to school with a ride from her dad. It's a quiet morning. This season of homeschooling is a whole lot different than any season of homeschooling I've been in. So if you are with me in that season of homeschooling, I'd love to hear that. If you're not in that season of homeschooling, well... I invite you to join me for the next 20 or 30 minutes. Plug in those earbuds, grab your laundry basket, fold up some laundry, invite the kids to join you. Or just take your one cozy blanket, your earbuds, into the bathroom and enjoy a little bit of quiet time with me. But let's just pretend you're sitting in a cafe. If you could join me at my favorite cafe, you know that I would order a single shot cappuccino and a Belgian chocolate chip oatmeal cookie, not to be specific. What would you like? I am trying to turn one of my two coffees in the morning into a turmeric ginger tea, which I know is a whole lot more healthy for me and provides me some anti-inflammatory benefits and is also kind of cozy and is orange, so it suits the season. By the way, for the price of a real coffee, you can contribute to this podcast at the buy me a coffee link on my podcast post or on the Instagram link in my bio. And if you have a question or a comment, I would love to hear from you. You can share your thoughts, questions, or comments on the Speak Pipe app at the end of the post. I'd be glad to hear from you. And if you'd like to connect with me in virtual time, At the end of the month, September 30th, you can join me at the Homeschool Mama Book Club. You can find the link on this post or at Instagram on the link in my bio. I would be delighted to connect with you 
This month, we are chatting about Brene Brown and how Brene Brown's principles in so many of her wonderful books can influence how we show up in our homeschools. And I love Brene Brown. If anybody knows her, let me know because I would love to invite her to be part of pretty much anything in my homeschool mama world. And I'd love to introduce you to her. So what's been happening in your homeschool world? I've learned that there is a whole lot of you that have begun homeschooling. And that means very many different things for many of us, because some of us have structured homeschool experiences at different times of the year, and some of us are full-on radical homeschoolers. I invite all of you. What's been going on in your homeschool world? This is what's been happening in mine. It's always after my husband's birthday, mid-September, that we usually begin some formal aspect of our homeschooling, which coincides with the local public school's schedule. Of course, when my kids were younger, I was completely unaware of the public school schedule, but both having a child in high school right now helps me understand that there is indeed a schedule that other kids follow. And also, there are not nearly as many homeschooled kids in my community as I know that there are in many parts of the world. And my kids are friends with an awful lot of other schooled kids. So our kids are accustomed in the last few years to beginning sometime around the mid-September. This year, as I said, I've really only got one kiddo in homeschool, and that is super weird. Turns out the dynamic is different than I expected it to be. It's been actually really pleasant. Me and my almost 13-year-old son are doing a couple of hours of activities together in the morning, and I'm finding a way to fit it in around all the other things that I'm doing. And I have to find that creative time to include all the things that I'm also doing alongside you in podcasting and coaching, connecting with you. It's a bit of a balancing act, but I don't really believe in balance. I think there's just a lot of mess on the sides and I just have to become accustomed to a little mess here and a little mess there and insert into my routine predictable times to do things like laundry, dishes, cooking food, because apparently people want to eat and my daughter that actually cooked the food is no longer here. So, you know, doing all those things It is not a train schedule, it's not my goal, and I'm doing a lot of things, and it's a really interesting and fun homeschool year. And for those of you that have seen my recent Instagram post about my third daughter, who's a junior in public high school this year, I've been delighted to have her ask me if I wanted to join her in reading one of her books for her psychology class. And um, giving a homeschool mom an opportunity to do a read aloud with my public school kiddo Um, yeah, of course, I'd be delighted. From one homeschool mama to another, I want to encourage you to take care of yourself. If you're looking for community and you'd like to connect with other homeschool moms, please join me over at the Homeschool Mama Book Club. From one homeschool mama to another, I want to encourage you to take care of yourself. Before my second daughter left for post-secondary school across the country, She challenged me to include in my routine a little bit more exercise. For about five months of last year, I had a pulled ligament. I couldn't walk. I was mostly moving from chair to chair to chair in the house. And needless to say, my fitness plummeted despite doing exercises with my upper body and maintaining some yoga. It plummeted and I felt yucky and I am leery about sharing with you a self-care tip that encourages you to get fit because I think our culture does a bang up job of shaming us into thinking that we have to look a certain way in order to be acceptable. And that is not my goal. But if you're in a place where you're not feeling good about yourself in your body, there is a simple approach to it. It is about getting active. In my personal experience, I need to get active first before I start switching up my diet because I actually feel more motivated. And I think it has to do with the hormones and it has more to do with the happy high I get from exercising. I just feel like eating less of the bad stuff after I've exercised. And it isn't intentional because I will still buy a pack of M&Ms for my kiddo's grammar word game, I'll explain later, and I'm still going to snack on almond crackers with hummus at about nine o'clock at night, I'm still going to enjoy the fish and chips that we've planned for Friday night. 
I don't have a goal. Five foot nine, size six pants from 2004. No, that's not the goal. Also, I literally gave them up years ago. But I've got an entire wardrobe that has become a little less comfortable and a little less well-fitted. And I want to feel comfortable again. So I am back at it doing a 20 minute run in the morning, giving my dog a solid walk in the evening and Pilates a couple times a week and yoga a lot of times of the week. And that's my goal right now until my very athletic second daughter kicks my butt and tells me to do a little bit more. So if you're interested in having an accountability partner, you can definitely message me and we can keep encouraging each other to participate in physical activities that simply make us feel healthier and able to walk up the stairs quickly to go grab the toddler before they fall down the stairs with ease. Hey, and I just want to share a practical thing from my homeschool that you might find useful in your homeschool. For many years, we've started our homeschool season with a kickoff first day party. Super weird just having one kiddo in my homeschool this year, but we're maintaining some of those activities. And one of them is mom jokes, mom jokes that I printed off from I don't know where. One of them is inserting silly homeschool mom jokes throughout the day. Like really silly. Like, how do you get straight A's? By using a ruler. What do you call a boy with a dictionary in his pocket? A smarty pants. Why did the homeschool teacher wear sunglasses? Because her class was so bright. Why was the student's report card wet? Because it was below sea level. What do librarians take with them when they go fishing? Bookworms. Why, and of course you're going to know this one, why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Okay, so super cheesy, I know, but the kids love it, right? I think they love it. Okay, don't ask them. One of the activities that we do in the first homeschool day party is M&M word mapping. Of course, I incorporate M&Ms, love M&Ms, peanut M&Ms to be specific. So for each color of the M&Ms, we lay flat a book, could be any book. It could be a textbook, it could be a Kingfisher encyclopedia, it could be a the most recent read aloud, it could be any book. We lay it flat and then we make a competition who can place their bowl of M&Ms most quickly on different words on the page. I'll call out verbs, green goes on verbs, I'll call out nouns, red goes on nouns, I'll call out yellow, yellow goes on adverbs, you get the idea. Which by the way is so much easier if you do chocolate M&Ms because the peanut M&Ms are round and don't stay still. But I digress. This is a fun way to introduce your first homeschool day. And it's a yummy one too. I'm just two weeks away from opening the Fall Homeschool Mama Retreat and I hope you can join me. Together we're going to dig deep into reinvigorating you so you can show up in your homeschool the way that you want to. I've had very interesting discussions with homeschool mamas about the challenges that they experience within their family, sometimes within their faith communities in this last year. Sometimes it's that relationship that they have with their partner. And sometimes, and most importantly, it's their relationship they have with themselves. All of these relationships, especially the one that we have with ourselves, deeply influences how we show up in our homeschool. When we don't show up the way we want to, when we show up in a way that makes us feel embarrassed or it makes us feel like we're just not doing this well enough, we don't have a strong sense that what we're doing is actually consistent with who we really are or maybe what our values are or maybe we don't even know what our values are that are actually compelling us to do this homeschool thing. Well, it's time to evaluate then, to ask ourselves, How are we showing up? And is there a way for us to dig a little deeper, get a little clearer on why we're doing this homeschool thing or how we're doing this homeschool thing? 
And yes, there is a way because I offer a one month homeschool mama retreat and how it has gone so far is swimmingly. I have had a fabulous time with the homeschool mamas who have joined the retreat and mostly homeschool moms prefer doing one-on-one with me. And I am both honored Um, privilege to be part of their real homeschool worlds. If you could be a fly on the wall in the conversations, you would probably identify that they are sharing very vulnerably with me and I honor their stories. They're close to my heart. I am so privileged to be a part of their worlds and to really ask questions that help to spur on who they really are, what they're really all about, and how they can practically show up in their homeschools on purpose. I have received different feedback from a variety of people uh, because their life stories are all different and the challenges that they have are very different. And yet the feedback that I've received from each one is that I'm authentic and funny, which has been kind of new to me. I didn't realize I was funny. Really, I didn't. And also that I'm kind of the queen of candor. Surprise, surprise. The feedback that I've received from the homeschool moms that I've worked with compels me to connect with you if you're in a challenging place because I have been part of transformative stories for their lives and as eager for me to show up on purpose in my homeschool life as I want you to be able to show up in your homeschool on purpose. It enlivens me to know that I'm having an impact on homeschool moms. So have you got your laundry basket ready or have you got yourself tucked away into a quiet bathroom? Because today I'm going to share with you about how to live your homeschool life on purpose. Let's get started. I think there's this oxymoronic notion running in our culture that one must simplify to live a happy life. Simplify. The word denotes ease. Simple living. Breezy, easy living. The simplify notion is easy when I have a suitcase packed and our family's headed out the door to an exciting adventure four plane flights away which we had done for probably seven years of our homeschool life. Or even if we're just traveling a couple hours away with a packed minivan, traveling enables no dishes to wash, no meals to plan, no house to clean. There aren't enough kids' toys to perpetually move. I don't have all my stuff that requires a perpetual organizing and tidying, so I get to pursue a new hobby or a new book with ease. There are always new people to meet and never-ending activities that we haven't done before or seen before while we're traveling. These are travel adventures though. Through travel, life is simple. We're present without all the accoutrements. So we live lightly. Or at least that's me and my husband's approach We have seen couples with a half dozen pieces of luggage toting baby cribs and strollers with their toddlers while they're traveling on a plane somewhere. We're more backpack kind of people. Regular living, though, that puts your brick down, find a mailing address and sign up for an account for a national energy retailer to send you a monthly bill, well, that's much more difficult to make simple. I would know. I have tried and tried. I don't want to suggest I haven't accomplished some simplicity in my life. I did somehow manage to sell my childhood drafted dream home. That was a feat in simplifying my life. That home was light blue. It had white shutters and single hung windows. I spent hours, days, months planning that home, and I took great delight in every moment of planning. Every nook and cranny of that maple and alder kitchen was intentional. I pored over granite samples, stainless steel appliances, cutouts and niches, brushed nickel faucets and pot lighting. 
My olive oil knew where it would live the moment we grocery shopped and put stuff away in the pantry. I planned everything. The rest of that home didn't quite have the same care and attention, but I still pulled out my existing furniture and measured and planned and drew and drew and drew and made sure everything fit in perfectly. It was a childhood dream come true, and it was a full expression of my childhood creativity. Before it was even complete, my real estate friend and I walked through. She remarked that the dining room would make a lovely study for someone one day in the future. Perish the thought. I would never sell this house. This house is an expression of me. But then I did. For the sake of simplifying our lives. We put that for sale sign in the front lawn and we moved to a simpler life. Or so we thought. I purposely didn't purchase a new home in a new neighborhood in the new city we were to be living in because I couldn't spite my first home like that. If I was to simplify, it would have to fit my fantasy of simplicity. So we bought an old home with decades of stories in its walls but smaller, of course, minus the 18-foot entryway, minus the granite countertops, minus the sidewalk remarks of, holy smokes, who lives there? This house had stories. It was the same age as one of my grandma's. It might even have entertained the prime minister back in the 1960s because his justice minister had lived there. Once upon a time, another family had lived there for 30 years. Once upon a time, a theater producer lived there. If these walls could talk, they could write their own theater production. So when we began to simplify our lives, we pulled out old totes of baby clothes and decided just how many baby onesies were cute and how many baby onesies was also known as mommy hoarding. We found totes of 15 year nursing school notes when IVs had different procedures Babies didn't co-sleep, and even if I did return to nursing, I wouldn't be consulting those aged resources, so to the garbage, they all went. We simplified. But I discovered I was an organized hoarder. You know you're an organized hoarder when you have enough photo albums, scrapbooks, and photo books to fill an entire home library. You know which tote houses your first teddy bear. Yes, you may be 40, but you still can't part with him. You have a tote dedicated to lonely socks. You have a tote for photo negatives. Ode to the digital age. You save me space. Thank you, digital discovery. And for those that don't know what photo negatives are, I'll move on to the next thing. You have a tote for clothes you wore in your first year of marriage. You have a tote for unused picture frames. You have three totes of baby clothes and one large tote of kids' toys for the grandkids though my oldest at the time was only 12. You know which tote houses your grade 7 yearbook and that porcelain mother goose that opens to a perfume bottle, perfume that when you were a child you mixed with chicken bullion and water when you were about 6, but you still keep it? Definitely an organized hoarder. Definitely not simplifying your life. Come to think of it, I really should have taken out shares in Rubbermaid before I got married. And to top the list of organized hoarding, the kids think I have too many books. Ah, well, wait, that actually belongs on a different list of discussion known as you know you're a homeschooler when you have this many books. So we lived in that house for seven years. Seven years where we traveled and homeschooled our family of four And it was a lovely home that we created our own stories in. But then we decided to move again, to simplify our lives again. We purchased a three acre parcel of land, an opportunity to raise animals, a big old garden and skies the size of Texas with the backdrop of the Selkirk and Purcell mountains. The nearest town with the charm of San Fran, and the energy of Portland, coffee worthy of Paris, and the friendliness of instant family. We were creating the homesteading, homeschooling life. We'd be off-grid homeschoolers, the ultimate simple. 
Since we experienced off-grid travel in rural Ghana, with occasional electricity, we knew it wasn't quaint or romantic as much as it might sound like it is. It isn't. Electricity is kind of nice if you like freezers filled with food for tomorrow, or you don't prefer washing your clothes in the bathtub and hanging it outside to dry. Water straight from the tap, not hauled 45 minutes from a creek downhill, is definitely a pleasure I am unwilling to give up. And filtering water for eight hours, boiling it and filtering it again, is not charming and definitely not simple. As off-grid homeschoolers, we could learn to chop wood and harness our forest. We could continue learning to dry our laundry outdoors and plant vegetables, but I knew that living off-grid in order to simplify my life was a fantasy. Living off-grid is hard, hard work. But the goal is useful, to give us a lot more time to spend doing the things we want to do, also known as living our lives. So we got to choose how we're living our specific days on purpose. Be present. Do the things we really want to do, not just organize things. We need to make our lists of stuff we do and do it. We need to ask ourselves if we are living a life worth living today. We need to simplify our homeschools and streamline it so that it actually is meshing with what our intentions for our life lived well is today. And so the quest for simplicity always continues as we learn to simplify our home and homeschool. Know why you're doing what you're doing. Share your real self with others. Be authentic with others so that you're experiencing your real life. Be proactive in your challenges, not reactive, but working towards being proactive and being intentional in the challenging moments helps us to streamline our actual day-to-day existence. So choosing to be proactive, not reactive to the challenging stuff around us. Enact a morning routine. There's something about starting that first hour, 20 minutes, five minutes on purpose that helps set the rest of the day. Create a calendar course that's speaking from somebody who really likes calendars loves writing stuff down in a day timer and having a general plan but I know that not everyone's like that just know that the things that you're actually including in your day are the things that you really want to do you're not doing it because someone told you to do it because you feel compelled someone asked you therefore you must or because everybody else is doing it or because that thing sounded really cool even though your kids hate it No, create a calendar of activities that you actually want to include. Choose your influencers. The people that are influencing you are having a profound impact on how you're living out your day to day. Take care of yourself. You knew I was going to say that. If you're not including practices that include you in your regular homeschool routine, then you're not going to be doing this homeschool thing for long without unhappiness, overwhelm, or resentment. So include you in your routine. Purpose is created by you. Choose to do this homeschool thing, your family life, maybe your work and homeschool life on purpose. We are more than blessed to be able to live this homeschool life on purpose if we so choose. It's not so much about getting rid of the stuff that we own. It's more about using the stuff that we have for the purpose of our daily lives. So let's together live our homeschool lives on purpose. I would love to learn more about who you are. So introduce yourself at the Homeschool Mama self-care Instagram page or the Facebook group, the Homeschool Mama support group, so we can support and encourage each other in our homeschool challenges. While you're there, you can check out my book of homeschool encouragement, Homeschool Mama Self-Care, Nurturing the Nurturer. If you're a homeschool mama looking for a mentoring group to gain clarity, confidence, and vision in your homeschool, to create a plan to nurture the nurturer, and be intentional in how you show up in your homeschool, ask me about the Homeschool Mama Retreat or the Capturing the Charmed Homeschool Mentoring Group. All the show notes and links to this episode will be found at www.capturingthecharmedlife.com. 
Until next time, I hope you and your kids have a charmed week, or if you're having one of those weeks, I hope you can reframe your challenges into your homeschool charms.